Welcome back to the Missoula Podcast. Excited to be in studio. Brandon, my man. You are always excited to be in studio. Does, do I say that every time? I don't know. I just feel like you're really excited all the time. Well, like yeah. you always come in. I say the same thing every time. Every yeah, time. you're good. Well, yeah, I mean, I am. We have I'm excited too. always guests. excited. I'm excited. We live in Missoula. We're doing this for like a job. Courtney's on the cool. show. Courtney's Courtney? in here. Woo-hoo. Yes. So first name started. on a first Courtney. name only. It's Courtney. like Cher. Courtney. Yeah. Cher. Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> Imhoff. What is an Imhoff? Imhoff. Where does that come from? What? Do you know? Don't ask me the backstory. Courtney of my last Imhoff. Name. That, that's a married name. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Well, let, let's start we'll there. Gr- what, what's we'll, your maiden name? We'll have not much different. Petrov. <laughs> Petrov to Imhoff? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, for real. For a that's while, awesome. we said we were going to hyphenate. Just for, I was going to hyphenate just for fun. So it would be Petrov Imhoff. But Petrov has to be a Russian name, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Bulgarian. Mm-hmm. Okay. Courtney, question okay. for you. Okay. Looking back at your career, what is the one event that you produced oh, that is God. just the one? You nailed it from every aspect. Oh, the the Brandon. response from the audience, the response from the client you were working with. It was just flawless. And now, like, the bar has been set. Oh, that is so hard because all of the events that I do are so different. I mean, I think probably like my favorite from a creativity perspective was when we initiated the lip sync battle. And that was spawned off of like LL Cool J had um, his lip sync battle show. And this was considered like the battle to beat cancer. It was for Can't Make a Dream. And it was really just a collective effort of like six of us sitting around a table thinking about what does Missoula not have? Um, what's fun and different and um, allows us to have kids involved because that's the cause behind the event. And um, we did it the first year and did not know what to expect. We sold out two shows um, at the Top Hat, which it seems super small now. Um, And then the very next year we had to go over to MCT, sold out MCT. And then we ended up going to um, the Denison Theater, nearly sold out the Denison Theater, um, which is like 1,100 seats. So it just kept growing and growing and growing. Then COVID hit. Um, and then we did our COVID version of the lip sync battle, which was outside at the Paddlehead Stadium. Um, so everybody could still be there and do it, but um, and it didn't lose its love. On the flip side, is there an event that you look back and be like, ooh, so many. We could have we could have we could have been better. <laughs> that that didn't go. It was, a, it was a learning experience. You know, I think I always look at all of my events as a learning experience. Like that's the whole idea behind a successful event or a successful momentum on any given event is like, how do we get better and better and better? We can celebrate like all the things that we've done well, but let's figure out how we do more and better every time. So that's a very generic answer, but it's true for me. Let's go back to the beginning. You're originally from Bulgaria. And how <laughs> totally how, yes. is that, absolutely isn't that not what yeah. I heard? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good version. Yeah. I'll take that. Okay. Yeah. How did you end up in Missoula? So I grew up in Missoula. Um, I grew up here, lived in Lolo. Uh, my mom was a single mom. Dad lived in Missoula. Super awesome. Um, and then I moved to Seattle out of high school and lived there. Where'd you go to high school? Um, Big Sky. Go Eagles. I, know. I love it. I can't say I that because I have two Sentinel Spartans, mm. but it's my love. We'll keep it quiet. <laughs> you don't have to tell anyone. We won't tell them that. Yeah. What did you, why did you go out to Seattle? What was the draw there? Yeah. So I think most kids that grow up in Missoula, I feel like they long for more. Like that's just kind of a natural next step is where do I go? Where can I go? What can I do? So the original intention was to go. I had an aunt that lived out in Bellevue, Washington, um, and was super close to her. And so the intention was to go out to Bellevue and then um, get my residency and start school. Um, And then my mom 
had been sick all through high school. Mm. Um, and when I got out there, got sicker. And so my stint in Seattle lasted. Um, it was shorter than I originally anticipated and then needed to come home to take care of my mom. Mm. So I was out there for a year and then came back to Montana, kind of went through the process with my mom, went back out to Seattle, lived there for six years, moved to Colorado, and then ended up back here when I had a kiddo. Can I back up to growing up in a home with a single mom? Yeah. What are some of the advantages that you got from that? And I, I know there's some obvious disadvantages, but when you look back on that upbringing, what do you draw from it? I feel super fortunate to have had a rock star mom. Like I look at single moms now and I think like Bravo, it's incredible and it's challenging. And I think my mom specifically, like she was raising, there's four of us girls. Two of us were still in the house. She was making $11 an hour um, as a single mom and raising us. And she did an incredible job. I never, growing up, I never realized like how truly poor we probably were. Like it, that was not on my radar at all. Um, and so I think she really did a great job of making sure that we were taken care of and got every need taken care of um, without us really ever realizing probably what she sacrificed to make that happen. So I feel very lucky um, to have had her as my mom. I don't know that all kids get that same thing growing up as a single, you know, when they have a single parent, but um, I felt really lucky. And my dad's still very much involved. I saw him uh, every other weekend and then the month of July. So he was still around and doing all the things, but I was primarily with my mom. So you went to Seattle to be a nurse? Is that what I'm hearing? Or a doctor? No, neither one. Okay. Yeah. I, I was not yeah. listening. I mean, well. that would be great. I would be bold. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you come up with that? I thought I heard residency. So in my mind, I went to. Oh, that's yeah. But yeah, I screwed that up. You're good. Really uh, no, active I've, listening. Remember yeah. that doctor from Bulgaria that was on the podcast? Oh my even? gosh. I have a whole new career. You this guys, is amazing. I'm, I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> You went to Seattle that. To, yeah. get, to get away from Missoula yeah. and to see what's more. Yeah. What were you doing those six years in Seattle? Yeah. So that's kind of where my event, the event world came to be. I ended up um, working randomly at this company that did trade shows for Microsoft and some of the larger Nintendo, some of those um and so I started doing that, which ironically, I was doing like transportation for those entities. So I was coordinating like all of their stuff, getting to where they needed to get. Um, and then another company ended up reaching out to me and um, poaching me. Um, and they had their own company that did design um, textiles and stuff like that. And they... So my territory ended up being the Southeast United States. And so I would travel to shows for them um, and set up trade shows and get their product out there and meet with customers and the larger. What was it series, about that opinions. job or industry profession that you just loved, fell in love with? I like people. Like I love to be with people. Um, I love to hear people's stories. I love to see new culture, new things. And so that job allowed me to do that. Simultaneously, I will say I was very young. Um, and so I was traveling. So it was like every other week I was in the Southeast United States instead of Seattle. And so at some point I was like, this is too much. Like I can't even actually live my life in Seattle. I'm spending far too much time on the road. And so I think there was a happy balance. But I loved, I mean, I just love being around people and seeing new places. I'm still like that. 
And I think it afforded me a really great opportunity to do that. Where did you meet your husband along that journey? I met Greg. So shout out to Greg. Okay, let's see timeline here. Greg is not uh, Bulgarian. Greg is not. We will find out his history later. Um, so why am I stuck on that? Why is the Bulgarian thing yeah. a thing? I mean, maybe you maybe you don't see it very often. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you don't hear about it very yeah, often. Know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll move maybe on. you want to go there. Uh, okay. Maybe. Okay. Um, so Greg actually, I met Greg after I had moved. So I had moved back home to be with my mom. Um, and then moved back out to Seattle and I met Greg at a friend's birthday party. So you brought him back to so, Missoula. We actually did the long distance thing for a while. Um, so I ended up, this is very complicated, Brandon. So I'm, I moved back and forth from Missoula to Seattle several times. So I met, uh, totally, (laughs) totally. (laughs) uh, yeah, we'll talk, we'll get in depth about that. Right. Um, She updated her MySpace (laughs) to say it's complicated. (laughs) For sure. Um, so I had actually moved back to Montana and then long story short, we met in Seattle. Then we did the long distance thing. I was living here. He was living there. Um, and then I ended up back in Seattle again. And then you said you ended up in Colorado. Yeah. Did that, did yeah. work your career take you there? Or? Yeah. So, um, Colorado ended up being, so when Greg and I got married, we were like, we actually really want to see other places. Like we want to go and we want to, we want to travel. And, um, so we had gone to visit a friend, actually my friend that I was just with in, um, Las Vegas. So we went to visit her and we fell in love with Colorado. We absolutely loved it. And so then we just, then I started to apply for jobs in Colorado and we originally wanted to be in Boulder. Um, my job then took me to Colorado Springs. Very different. But um, we Still lived. nice. It's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, maybe a little too gorgeous for my husband because it was like we went from Seattle, which was when we left, it was like 90 days of straight rain. And then we moved to Colorado and it was 265 days of sunshine. And he was like, I'm going to need a little variety. <laughs> so, so It's rare that you hear it. It's usually like, yeah. Wow. yeah. Yeah. He was, he loved, like he loved the beauty of it, but um, yeah. So we ended up in Colorado and we lived there for two and a half years until I had my son, Eli. Um, and then we decided that we needed to be closer to family. And so all my family lives in Montana. So we ended up back here. I want to go back to long distance relationships. Yeah. How did you guys do it? Because there's so many young people that ask me, can we make this work? Yeah. And I'm always like, don't do it. Oh, don't do it. But I think I, maybe I'm giving bad advice. Yeah, because you probably are. I need are. to be talking to Courtney. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah. Courtney. so send them my way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or Greg. We don't uh, know Greg, yet yeah. which, oh, which one they need to talk yeah. to. Yeah. Maybe you do need to talk to Greg. <laughs> he what would was be your secret? More on yours. Yeah. Um, you know what? We Back in the day... Okay. We had to talk like legit talk on the phone. We couldn't be texting or, or Snapchatting. So we, our conversations were like an hour and a half long every single night. Right. So you, I feel like we got to know each other really, really, really well. Um, and on such a deeper level, um, and then we were long distance for a year before we ended up getting married. Well, we ended up moving in together and then getting married. Um, and I mean, I think it just worked for us. I don't think it works for everybody, but I think it definitely did work for us. I think we were committed. Like we knew we were, so I was 24 when I met Greg, he was 28. Um, and I think for us, like we had kind of, been independent enough. Like I had lived on my own. I was pretty independent. He was super independent. Um, and so when we found each other, I feel like we kind of just knew like, this is, this is actually the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. 
Um, so it was probably a commitment from the get go, right? Like we were invested immediately. Gotcha. That's probably what worked. All right. That's Long good. distance probably won't work if you're kind of half in, half out. <laughs> that's what I meant. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. That's what I want to say next time. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you're Luckily, fully, it's recorded. If you're fully committed, you don't have to try to remember. It's recorded now. Oh yeah. There you go. I'll just, pl- I'll just play <laughs> this back. If you're fully committed, it will work. Period. That's what I heard. Mm, there we go. Mm-hmm. Just repeat that. Okay. Or send them to court. Simplify. Yeah. yeah, I like that. So you guys get back to Missoula, and does your career take off when you get back here? Or were you kind of in mom mode? Yeah, no, I've always worked. Um, so I went to work for, when I came back here, I went to work for Western States Insurance at the time. Um, and I went to work there, not as it was not in the event world. Um, so they had... Back in the day, it was like this call center. Um, And so I was managing kind of that little call center. And then at one point, the gal that was doing the events for Western States went on maternity leave and they knew I had event experience. And so they were like, hey, would you like to take over this one larger event that they did every year, an annual sales conference? And I took that over and it just stuck. Um, I was sucked right back into the event space (laughs) and I was with them for six years. Uh, and we, by the end of that, we were doing like 30 conferences a year. It was a lot and I was traveling a lot and Eli was growing up really fast. Were you independent at that point? It was not. Uh I was working for them. Um, doing 30 events a year for them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, little things and then larger events. And they went through a lot of growth over those six years. I mean, it was Western States. Um, and then they got ba- they got bought and it ended up being Payne West Insurance. And so there was a lot of, so they were kind of merging um, two entities. Well, they weren't kind of, they were. Um, and what ended up happening is like, it ended up being double the amount of events, but just because they tried to keep the ones that they had on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I ended up just feeling like, gosh, I'm missing out on my child's life. And there was always a calling for me. Like I'm doing all of these events, but there's something missing behind them. And it was more of like, I need to feel what I'm doing is contributing to the greater good. And I always felt that like in the back of my head, I was like justifying, like doing these 30 conferences and you are doing great things. Like you're hiring great speakers and they're giving powerful motivational messages. But for me, I needed to do more than that. I needed to see it firsthand. And so then it was for me, like, I just need, I feel like I need to go out on my own and I need to do events for a cause. You ready for rapid fire? I'm ready. Okay. Uh-oh. What's your first initial memory of Missoula, Montana? Okay. So I think my first initial memory is when I was five years old, I was getting ready to go to the circus and we lived up on the hill and we had this beautiful house and I had gotten all dressed up for the circus. And we had a pond in my backyard and I ended up rolling down the hill and into the pond. (laughs) Uh, And I was so excited because it was this beautiful, wonderful dress that I was supposed to be wearing to the circus and I didn't get to wear it. (laughs) How's that? But I did get to go to the circus, just not in the dress I wanted to wear. (laughs) No doubt with being a party event planner, late Mm -hmm. nights, early mornings, lots of coffee. Mm, Yeah, definitely. What's your go-to coffee shop in Missoula? Okay, so I sit down at Clyde's. I drive through at Loose Caboose. Great. It's a great way to Mm -hmm, answer that. mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. I've never thought of it that way. Yeah. That's great. We should change the question. I like to chill at Clyde's. Where's your drive through and where's your sit down? Yeah. We'll think about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. just change the show You're welcome. That'll be $500. Um, (laughs) What's your favorite restaurant? Uh, drive through restaurant and then sit down restaurant. (laughs) Since you you uh, make the rules now. Ooh. You're not going to like this answer. Why? I do love me some McDonald's. Wow. That is shocking. (laughs) 
<laughs> wow. I don't know. That, yeah, I don't okay, know that I don't like the answer. But that's not my favorite restaurant. That's your favorite like, sit That's down? my favorite drive through. Oh, okay. Like if I'm going to go through a drive through, I well, that's probably a lie. Ooh, it's a toss up. McDonald's or Taco Bell. What is a drive? Have you ever eaten anywhere else? Have you? Yeah, ever- yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my favorite restaurant is Zutai. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's oh, all three of ours. All three of ours. It's my it, favorite in Missoula. Oh really? Yeah, it's so. It's good. my number three in the world. I have an ongoing list, but wow, they should pay you for that. It's amazing. Is this your yeah. rapid fire questions, Brandon? Or? Sorry, I'm making. <laughs> if she's making up answers, yeah. I can make up questions. <laughs> yeah, this is just a conversation. Yeah. Okay, we're sorry, learning a lot sorry. about each other right um, now. What zip code do you live in? 59803. Yes. Mm-hmm. Best zip code in Missoula. What's the weirdest thing about Missoula? Oh, I go between the people and the potholes. There's a lot of potholes. People are fairly strange sometimes, too, in a wonderful way. What do you love most about Missoula? The people. Yeah. 100% the people. Is there a book that you've read that has made a significant impact on your life? So listen to me, you guys, I have to admit something and this is not going to be a good answer. I hate reading. Like I am not going to tell you that I have read a powerful book that has let me to lasting impression. Okay. Let me rephrase the question. Let me help you out here. Have you heard of a book that impacted people? (laughs) Just say atomic habits. uh, Um, so many. Listen, I don't necessarily have time to read, sit down and read. That's my. Have you binge watched the reality TV show that made oh, a significant yeah, impact you on your know life? I do. Um, I don't know if your children are obsessed with this right now. Avery probably is, but Love Island. I don't know. Yeah. No, my wife is. I don't know. Oh, yeah. My teenager is. So it's a good bonding moment. <laughs> Not really, is probably not, but I think this is a first. This is the first time but we've listen, never had a book. Look at I would. Do I, you know I, how to I read? Contemplate, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to gauge. Um. Okay. Questionable. Okay. I'm just kidding. I was. I want to be authentic. That's no, very important. No. Yes. Yes. Listen, you I do not want to make yes. it up, and yes. I just am not a reader. Yep. I love that. I'm other not a reader either. Are. Do you listen to books? No. No. You don't. No. Oh, okay. How about this? Do you listen to podcasts? Occasionally. Okay. Do you yeah. listen to the Missoula podcast? I do. Okay. All the time. That's your. Mm-hmm. So, That's what's your it. favorite? Yeah. In podcast? fact, I I really did love that you had Sammy on here. He's my favorite person. One of my favorite people. Thank you. And of course, Dan Reese. Hello. Thank you. You know what's amazing? Mm-hmm. We've had I don't remember 60, 70 episodes. Every person that's been on here has been awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just great people. Yeah. All of them. Mm-hmm. It's, well, isn't that the whole idea behind your podcast? I mean, it is, it is but you don't finding... really, you don't really, it was conceptual. Yeah. And then it started happening. I was like, wait, this is just yeah. real. If we can get past all the weirdness of Missoula and the different pockets and belief systems and hair color and the way we dress or yeah. style, like people are awesome in this community. Yeah. I think that's the most beautiful thing about Missoula. And that's exactly like what I see in my event world is I see the best people, the best, Mm -hmm. literally the best humans and the best side of people. When I'm at an event, because they're all nonprofit fundraisers, like I am seeing people that are giving thousands and thousands of dollars or hundreds and hundreds of hours all for the greater good. Mm -hmm. Like, so you're not wrong. Right. I mean, Missoula is 100%. That is the collective makeup of this town. Yeah, I think it's just, as Brandon spoke to, it's been shocking because you think you're going to have one or two guests that come in that you're like, I didn't like that person. That hasn't happened. And once you sit down with somebody and hear their story, where they came from, why they do what they do, you end up walking away from this like i really like that person mm-hmm. that's cool mm-hmm. i see why they're why they're doing a different they're... perspective from what yeah. yeah you originally Missoula's had. portrayed or media or city or yeah. story you've heard and just yeah. yeah yeah sure it's been awesome which i'm excited to get back to this to your story so you're you're wanting a little bit more yeah. maybe having sort of like a quarter life crisis of <laughs> i like what i'm doing i'm yeah. good at what i'm doing but I want to make more impact. Absolutely. So tell us about that jump from Western States or Pain West at the time to your own thing, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
have to credit my husband. I mean, I had talked about it for probably two years before I actually took the jump. Um, and it was a total leap of faith. I had no, I wish I could say that I had this grand plan of exactly how I was going to execute it. But for me, it was like, I've been thinking about this for so long. I just need to take action and do it. And I have to have faith that it's going to work out the way I want it to work out. Um, And so I gave my boss my notice and he was super upset. Um, And he said to me something that I actually think is like super powerful. He said, okay, well, you can do that. I'm not exactly sure that you're going to be a good business owner, but you could sure try. And in that moment, I was like, oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> I am going to like, make you Is that written your on your mirror? Words. Like, do you see that every morning when you <laughs> yeah. wake up? Yeah. I have always kind of been that way. Like, I think about back and I mean, I know bosses or coaches or, you know, sometimes they'll use that like, reverse psychology to get you going. And it clearly works on me. Like for me, if someone tells me that I can't do something, I'm proving them wrong. I bet you can't read a book. Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if I'm that motivated, Brandon. (laughs) (laughs) But that's just how you're wired. Like, Yeah. Yeah. I really, I, I don't like, how do I want to phrase this? I feel like for me, my life was not easy. Like I have not had the easiest life. Mom was sick from a very early age. Like growing up was different for me. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if someone's going to tell me that I can't do it for me, it's like, no, I've, I've been there. I've done that and I'm doing it again. So you started your own business. You went and did it. Mm -hmm. I did it. And what, uh, what's the name it of your business? So hard. Event Allure. And what, where does that name come from? What's, what's Allure? <sighs> to me, it meant um, that these events were going to capture people's hearts and minds and be exciting for people. Um, and that's exactly kind of where, what I think about when I do it. So I, yeah, I gave my notice and then I sat down and I created a list of all the organizations that I felt like I was compelled to help. Um, and that history is solely based on my own experience, right? So I know a lot about cancer. I know a lot about people that are suffering. I have children. So there's passion projects. And that's 100% what it is. It's a passion project for me. So kids and cancer um, seem to climb the ladder really quickly. Um, and so I just started cold calling. Literally, everyone that I wanted to work with. What'd you say when they picked up? I explained that I was starting this business and how many years of experience I had in the event world. And um, would they be willing to sit down and meet with me? And it was hard. I mean, it was definitely radio silence from some. Um, but Mo- I think more no's than yeses that first year, or what? Uh, yeah. What was the response? Definitely. I yeah. mean, Initially, I think more no's than yeses, but then people took a chance, I think, you know, I mean, and I'm very, I feel very fortunate for that. I mean, there were just some folks that said, yes, we would love for a nonprofit. It makes a lot of sense for somebody else to come in and help you with your events. You don't have all this overhead of someone that is a full-time employee um, that you have to pay to do it. and they just don't have that much money to do that. So for a lot of the nonprofits, especially especially the local kind of tinier ones that I work with, they may or may not even have staff. Um, and so it makes the most sense for them to hire someone like me to do that. And so I got really lucky and I ended up getting a couple gigs, but I worked a part-time job while I was getting my business up and running. I couldn't not. I mean, we needed to have the money. I had two kids at that point. Um, and I just knew I was going to work as hard as I needed to, to make this work. And then a year later, I, not even a year later, I had to quit my part-time job. Hmm. Um, and since then it's been all word of mouth. 
Uh, the only clients I take on are clients that have been referred to me from others. It seems to me that a lot of young women want to be event planners. <laughs> Have you noticed this? Or, photo oh, or photographers. Oh, sure. Yeah. Photographers yeah, and event yeah. planners. No, it's true. A hundred percent true. So I feel like you're living out so many people's dreams. Uh, how often does that happen to you where um, women will come up and be like, I wish I could do what you do. I want to do what you do. Yeah. It seems like such a glamorous job, right? Like they're, and I think that's what initially people are super excited about. Because they're just seeing um, the finished product. They are just seeing the finished product. But I think in my space, the world that I live in, um, mine is a is relationships, and ultimately, it's how much money we can raise for a single organization at a single event. And so, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure that we think through every possible scenario to make that happen. Um, and so, I always, I really, when people say that to me, I just smile. You know, I just smile because ultimately, if you want to go into the event world, like I did one wedding once and that was it. I that was, was the ask you, only wedding I Are ever the only did. events you're doing fundraisers for nonprofits? That, that's what you Correct. specialize in. You're not doing. No, no, absolutely not. What was it with Madeline's that wedding? birthday party Saturday? And... <laughs> absolutely not. Okay. I, I mean, I'm sure she's great, but I don't know. I don't want to do a birthday party. Um. I think it goes back to what I said earlier. Like I wanted to do events for a cause. I wanted to, I wanted it to benefit the greater good. And not that a marriage doesn't do that because it does, but it, I want my work to go further. I want it to impact more than just a couple people. Um, yep. Courtney, you, you weird, are, but. I admire this about you, that you are more of a behind the scenes person, highlight the organization, the person, the family. Uh, there are several events in Missoula. Like a lot of Missoula has participated in the event that you've put on. What are some of the local organizations that you've partnered with that have yeah. put on their corporate events? Yeah. I mean, it's morphed, Brandon. So, you know, there are some that I've been involved in that I'm no longer involved in for one reason or another. Um, but I mean, we, I've done the red, I did the red shoe ball with Ronald McDonald house for years. Um, we, Brandon and I did a remote piano palooza together. Um, I do a lot for Camp Make a Dream. Um, so Rat Pod is one of them. If you've heard of Rat Pod, um, I do a lot for uh, More for Kids, which is Missoula Organization of Realtors charity. Um, Families First. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, different entities that I work with. What do most people not understand about? working with nonprofits and events and, and putting on these events, like the normal person like myself, what do we get wrong most of the time about what you do? Ooh, that's a tough question. I mean, probably the sheer amount of time and energy, right? I think I get this question a lot, which used to offend me. Um, but it was, what do you do all day? Um, and I, <laughs> I get that question too. <laughs> what do you do? I'm all supposed day? to be offended by that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I said I it used Steven to. Steven just reached me. over and patted yeah. me on the <laughs> leg for those of you that are listening and not watching. Yeah. Um, and I think it what it boils down to is if you're gonna do a fundraising event well, you pour your heart and soul into it. Like you are you're thinking about it even when you're sleeping. Like it is something that you are, you're dreaming up new ideas. You're dreaming up the best possible way. You're dreaming up relationships that you can have, partnerships that you can have with different organizations. Um, in my opinion, it's like this is a relationship business and people are drawn to the charities that initially they're drawn to the charities that um, they might relate to. But ultimately, then it becomes the charities that treat them well and the charities that um, acknowledge that they are supporting them and, and the work that they're, you know, I mean, it just becomes more of a relationship building. Um, and that's what I'm there for. Like, that's, I'm there to make sure that the, the charities that I'm working with um, 
are the charities that people want to be a part of. They want, they feel the love, they feel the connection, they know where the money is going, they see it making a difference. Um, I have no interest in being a part of some of the events that where there's not full transparency or really just um, gratitude. That's admirable. You may not know the number, but with the dozens of events a year and the several years you've been doing this, like you have impacted and helped generate hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars and zero accolades, reward, public gratitude for what you've done i don't do you do you know that number i do but only that's that's amazing because i just recently did the math um yeah so i mean over the years i've it's 4.5 million dollars it's incredible Mm -hmm. it's amazing Mm -hmm. yep and not always easy because you're working inside of a budget. You just can't come in and oh yeah, no. you know you're working with some type a nonprofit's <laughs> yeah. budget yeah. for their fundraising yeah. event, and so yeah. But I actually love that. Like going back to just like the authenticity of things, right? Like a lot of the charities that I work with, they don't want to spend a ton of money on an event. Like they they're holding that money really super close to their chest, mm-hmm. and that. It's for a reason. It's because they want to be able to give it. They want to be able to give it back. Um, And so the more money they spend, the less money they are able to give away. And my job is to make sure that they can give away as much as they possibly can. Like, and I take that very seriously. It's not, so I don't necessarily want, this is no offense to some of the amazing, beautiful events that are out there. um, But I want to be a part of the charities that are more down to earth, you know, like, okay, yes, we're going to spend a small amount of money on like decor or what the room looks like or, but our ultimate goal is to make money and to make sure that we can give it to the kiddos that have cancer or the kids that have no backpacks and no clothing and Though that's what I want. Do you think it's a misconception or just something that the general public is naive about the expense of some of these events? Like you have to find a a space to host it. You're yeah, renting, catering, like the overhead yeah, isn't I mean, real it's low not, for events. It's not cheap to hold a fundraising event. That's for sure. I mean, there's definitely ways to scale back and make sure that you're not overspending on certain things. Um, and look, Missoula is a really super generous town. And so there's a lot, it go, again, it goes back to relationships. Like I'm, I feel very lucky because I have worked with, I've had my business for now eight years and I've worked with a lot of the same places, same people for years. And so a lot of times the things that I am able to get for my clients is different than what other people can get for their clients. They might give me more or do more for me because they have a relationship with me. And that's my goal, right? So like when I partner with different entities, whether it's my client or the pe- the vendors that we're working with, like I want to have a really good relationship with you so that you trust me to do the right thing and I trust you. And then we can all like work to raise a ton of money for the people that need it. But yes, Brandon, it's very expensive. Oh, it can be very that's expensive. That's good. The difference is relationships. I like that. Courtney, when I'm hearing your story, like I'm so jacked up that you made that leap to do something that was meaningful to you. And I'm assuming there's a lot of people out there, maybe a couple in this room, that have like really stable jobs yeah. and maybe have something on their heart that they want to uh, take a jump at, but they're, they're scared. Uh, is there any encouragement that you give to those people out there? Do it. Like I looking back on it now and I have a, I have an 18 year old son. Um, he'll be going to college pretty soon. He wants to be an entrepreneur. That's like his whole goal. And I am like, I don't care. Do it, do it. Just figure out what you love and do it. Like, 
There is no reason. You can always go back to a job. You can always find a nine to five. You can always find a different job. I think our life is meant to live with passion. Right? So do it. Don't wait. Like I would, I wish I would have done it a lot sooner. I was older by the time I started my business. And I, I don't regret learning so much, but I do regret just waiting so long. You know, I wish I would have had the confidence to just do it right away. Well, I just want to thank you so much for listening to the show, first off. Uh, second, the only podcast. Mm, that's right. <laughs> and and coming down today to share a little bit about your story. And it's just so incredible how you've turned your journey uh, some hardship, some heartache, and you're able to give back and to be so passionate. Like you. when you talk about what you do, the joy is coming out of you. Uh, yeah. And I wish that for everybody. So agreed. Um, is there something like looking back your childhood and the challenges of single mom and $11 an hour <laughs> and three other sisters that you've learned that mm -hmm impacts you and how you run and operate your business or work with our community today? Yeah. I mean, I give full credit. Like our, my journey was not, like I said, it wasn't easy. Um, and the reason that I started the business was because I had that experience with grief and loss and I get it. Um, I think that continues to be what I think of as I'm going through like the hard days, the long days, I mean, we're do there are events when you are doing like a 20 hour day, um, that's not glamorous. Right. <laughs> and so I continue to think back on the $11 an hour that my mom made and, um, what she got with that $11, like what she made, the home she made, the love she made, for the eleven dollars an hour, and I continue to think about that as I go through my life. Like, how can I make? My mom always said, "Like, there, get the five dollars." And that was a lot back in the day when she, but she would. She always used it as an analogy, like, be the five dollar bill. Like, get the five dollar bill, do the five dollar thing. And I still think of that. Like, I want that to be my legacy, right? I want my kids to look at me. I'm going to get teary eyed. I want my kids to look at me the same way I look at my mom. Awesome. Thank you for that. I, I think just even listening to you talk, I just self-reflection. It's so easy for us to like live like this microscope of our past events, experiences shape us and format who we are but we often forget that other people who they are is because of their past Absolutely. experiences and i just appreciate you coming on and being vulnerable and sharing that with us I just admire what you're doing and seriously the 4.5 million the impact you're making in our community is awesome don't stop keep going thank you for um getting me out behind the curtain absolutely <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here Thanks, thank you guys yep. What's up, Missoula? This is Nick Bala, producer of the Missoula Podcast. We truly appreciate you hanging out with us as we dive into the stories that make our city special. If you could do us a quick favor and follow the show wherever you are listening, whether that's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, maybe you're watching on YouTube, so hit that little subscribe button. It really helps us out. Head on over to www.themissoulapodcast.com for more information, and we'll see you next week.